G'day. Welcome to Bootlosophy, uh, my channel about boots. If we haven't met, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on here in Perth in Western Australia, uh, the Wajik people. Now, uh, one of my viewers reached out to me uh, when I talked about Leon, Mexico in some of my reviews, and he gave me such an interesting uh, a set of facts about Leon that I asked whether he'd like to come onto the channel and be uh, interviewed. So uh, here we go. So Rudy, thank you for joining us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rudy Hurtado, uh, who was born in Leon, Mexico, I believe. Is that right? Correct. Good. Correct. Uh, so before we start, Rudy, how about you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, first of all, thank you for the uh, invitation to uh, talk to you and your audience. And I was born designer. in Mexico mm. and um, I came to Canada like 30 plus years ago. Right. Um, but I went to uh, design school. So I'm uh, an industrial designer by training. But what I do now is more of a branding designer because uh, I was always very uh, focused and interested in that kind of uh, thing. So uh, that's where I'm focused my time now. Um, uh, maybe give your Instagram handle and I'll drop it in the description below if anybody's interested in looking at your designs and so on. Sure, it's uh, R Hurtado, H-U-R-T-A-D-O, Global Branding at Gmail. Sorry, uh, it's, it's in uh, Instagram, sorry. <laughs> Terrific, I'll, I'll drop both. If you don't mind, I'll put your email as well down below. Oh, sure, uh, no So problem. people want, want, you know, there are some new boot brands and they might be looking for logos and branding. So you if they know. contact you. <laughs> you <never know>. Thank <laughs> Terrific, you. terrific. Um, so uh, tell, you contacted me, because uh, obviously I, I guess you watch my videos or follow me on Instagram. Tell me about oh. your interest in boots. Uh, my interest in boots uh, started out um, like around 15 years ago because I was always very interested in, in footwear because I, I'm from Leon. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, everybody from Leon has not less than 15, 20 pairs because <laughs> you always get you get them, you know, for free from friends. <laughs> whatever right so you always have a lot of pairs and so I was always very uh and because I serviced a lot of those uh you know you you get you grow up interested in in uh design and, and all that right yeah. but uh because I'm there's two main reasons why I'm more interested in boots now than shoes right. and one of them is I'm a soccer player and through my years, I've had a lot of ankle injuries. And uh, and so uh, I still play with uh, ankle uh, braces, right? Because it, it supports my my ankle. And with boots, I found that I, I was feeling the same thing, like more support on my ankle. Yeah. And two, because I'm in, you know, I'm in Canada and there, you only have like three, four months, of, mm, Three and a half months of uh, nice weather. The rest <laughs> is um, is boot uh, boot season. Have you seen this boots? Two monkeys. Oh, okay. Japan. It's a no, I haven't. It's a makto. It's from uh, a guy Mishiya in Japan. Mm -hmm. Do you know Michi Mishiya or? No, Michi I haven't heard of that. No. Oh, th this guy is amazing. Look how. Look! Look at the uh, the waist. Oh, it's very, yeah. yeah, very. Um, so the arch rock. support must be great, eh? Yes. Like here, you can you can actually. Yeah, it skate. goes in. I don't know if uh, you see it. Hold on. There. Yeah, it just you goes see? in. Yeah, it goes in. So the arch yeah. port, uh, arch support is very uh, nice, and there you go. Is that shell? No, no. I don't even know what it, I, I think it's uh, bobine. Right. But uh, right, because it's fairly new, it's still shiny. Um, 
but it, it could. Let's see. Hold on. I'm just going to get my Alden's. This is my shell cord vent. Let's yeah. see the difference. You see now yeah, you yeah, see yeah. the Definitely. Yeah, yeah. With the light. Yeah. Because yeah. as a designer, anyway, as an industrial designer, uh, aesthetics, uh, I, I feel that the boots have much better aesthetic uh, pleasure in, in me. It gives you more pleasure to look at them, right? right. If the uh, proportions are correct, it gives you a lot, a lot more uh, uh, pleasure to see it, right? When I see it, some somebody uh, wearing nice boots, well, you can't even, you have to look at them, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's very true. I mean, um, I'll just show you my Thursday captain. Uh, right. And I, this, this was, I, I, this is probably, well, it was my first American style heritage boot. Uh, and and I think when you talk about design and, and quality, um, OK, it's a $200 US boot made in Leon, Mexico, my introduction to Leon. But when you talk about design, I mean, that is a very pretty looking boot. Yes. Isn't that? Yeah. Very sleek. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. The uh, proportions are yeah. and there's there is a reason why they're selling like cakes, right? Other than the price. It, it's yeah. uh, it's the um, the proportions are correct, I think. Yeah. You know, you can make it better looking if you have, you know, uh, a shell cordovan, maybe yeah. a, a few other things. But at the end, the the design is the design, right? Yeah. So cannot, yeah. Anyway. Have you ever? Uh, this is very interesting. Have you ever, with your industrial design, ever thought of designing your own uh, boots? I have. Oh, you in have? In fact, today I received uh, one of them. Uh, let me just. This one right here. I'm not sure if uh, you can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. OK. That's very that's nice. Very nice. I, I designed it, obviously, uh, with a uh, bespoke maker, not other than in Mexico. Right. And Look, look at, the, well, this is. Uh, is. Is that a brogue boot? Brogue? No, no, there's no broguing here. It's just a cap toe. Right. But there's two uh, different yeah. leathers. This is bison and this is uh, calf from Italy. Lovely. But uh, this is fiddled back right here. Uh, yeah. This guy is amazing. Uh, he made his own uh, boot tree as well. Yeah. It, I can give you the link so you can see what he does because he this is a, a, a dress boot, but yeah, he, he can do, uh, you know, like a more rugged uh, yeah. service boot, if you will. Uh, Lovely. But it but it is, you know, bespoke. So Lovely. Yeah. it's a it's a, a one off kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, I, I have <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the discussions I've been having with people. Uh, is how difficult it is to design an innovative boot because you have uh, service boots, you have uh, brogue boots, you have Chelsea boots. And whenever somebody new comes up with a design, uh, I'll, I'll just show you uh, Christian Daniel. I don't know if you know the brand. Uh, I, I know. He I came know. up with this and I, yeah. I, I put this up on Instagram and and somebody said, oh, it's a bit derivative. It looks like a, a, a Viberg. And I was, I kind of get what he says, but when you go to service boot, I'm interested in your design philosophy is you have service boots, you have uh, uh, dress boots, you have uh, Oxfords, you have Chelsea boots. How difficult is it to make a different design? Uh, I'm sure it's more difficult uh, just because nothing is new in this world. Uh, I'm sure yeah. um, you can try and do something a little different, but uh, it might not be to the liking of most people, right? So it's only for yourself. And I've seen a lot of uh, people who do very almost crazy stuff, and it's amazing. But you're not going to appeal to 
the majority of people and that's what people like to do is to sell the more you sell the you know that's the business yeah uh, side of yeah. the uh, uh the manufacturing but yeah but i'm sure that i mean i've seen really nice different crazy uh types of uh shoes and boots but it's not for everyone and no. the reason why uh service boots are very similar is just because those you know the what there's a few elements to a boot you know you have your whether it is a cap toe or a toe cap your quarters your vamp and maybe the uh, backstay and that's it yeah right so um how much more different you, you can make those elements is i'm sure if, you know again there's a few brands even in leon there's one brand called unmarked i'm not sure if you have heard yeah of i know them they're doing, they, they're coming out with a few details, very, very nice details that I've, I haven't seen uh, a lot out there. And that makes them a little different, but yeah. they're not new. They're just ma making a little yeah. adjustments even. Like what you're saying about tweaking it, it's when is something similar and when is something a copy? Like, um, the, the old and indie. There are a lot of boots that look like an old and indie, and there are some coming out of China that are so similar that you might not know it's not an old and indie. It's it's when is it uh, when is it something that's been inspired by it, and when is it a straight copy? <laughs> you see that one to me, the indie. You can say that that one was an innovation, uh, an innovation, because I I don't I, I haven't seen any uh, boots that look like that prior to the indie. And so yeah. that you can say that it was an innovation, I would say, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and even Red Wing, they come up with a few things that the Makto, for instance, I mean, I'm sure they had ins inspiration from others, other brands or other very old uh, boots, but, you know, they're the ones who actually brought it to market and, you know, the, I call it innovation because, uh, you know, yeah. if they didn't do it, nobody would be yeah. doing the same kind of style, right? So yeah. anyway, that's, uh, yeah. that's a debate that can, we can go for hours and hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, look, I agree with you that the, the old and indie is innovative in the sense that uh, uh, nobody had done that design before. But the innovation is interesting because it's a service boot, plain toe service boot, but they decided to put a little... Uh, stitcher on the apron and, yes. and that's that tiny bit of innovation that makes it different yeah yeah exactly and so also, um yeah. what are your favorite styles of boots to be honest uh i like good made well made good designed boots i have them all i have uh you know monkey boots i have chelsea's i have uh service boots more, more uh, I would call them urban service boots because right, I, right. I, I don't work uh, heavy machinery or anything. I, I work from home, so yeah. I'm, if anything, I just walk. I can, I can do some hiking, but uh, not, you know, it's not my thing. And yeah. uh, but I like the look of a boot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. the 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 service boots that I have, they're very uh, sleek. I have all yes. them. I have the Vibergs because yes. they're more urban. Yeah. Right. So that yeah. that's what I have. But I like a lot of um. I like I like dress boots as well. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's Oxfords or uh, Derby's. Uh, I, I like them all. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I know a lot of people who have, you know, 50, 100 <laughs> service boots. And <laughs> again, my my thought is like, you know, how much more different are, is going to be one from the other, right? So that's why I like to change um, the styles when I buy because 
you know, if it's not like one col light color in black or dark color in one uh, style, you know, I know people that have all of the shades of the color, and but they look the same. <laughs> so, <laughs> each its own. I'm yeah. not saying that, that thing. It's just in yeah. my, because I like dress boots and shoes, although I, I haven't bought shoes in a long time because everything that I buy is boots now. Yeah, I, I, I think you're what I call a sensible collector that you actually have enough boots that you can you can rotate and wear them well. I'm I have to say and and in my defense because I I I get boots in order to review them. In my yeah. case I'm starting to lose touch with wearing the boots and in really uh you know getting the value out of the boots. Uh and once upon a time I wore every single boot I had but now it's starting to be where I go to the shelf and go, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> I, I, I think that my own interest in boots uh, actually started during COVID. I mean, I've, I've had boots in, in Australia. I own RM Williams. I had Timberlands, you know, that sort of boots. Uh, but during the COVID lockdown, not much you can do. You work from home. You're just not as busy, even though you're working. And you, you tend to scroll, you watch YouTube. And that's when I started uh, getting an interest in boots. And I, I think it's, I find that just talking to people that the boot trend, if you like, particularly the sort of US style, uh, uh, heritage style boots from Red Wing and so on, I, I think they really started growing internationally in the last three or four years. I mean, they've always been there, but they, I think people suddenly picked them up. Do you find the same, same sort of? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, especially because the, uh, the Japanese people uh picked it up and so kind of gave it a boost if you will right so uh but uh but i always you know for 15 years i've had uh yeah. boots and uh again dress boots and service boots uh yeah. because i like the style yeah. but you're right uh it's just the boom kind of started like i would say even four four or five years ago and uh slowly but now it's like everybody wants uh, a, a service boot for, for some yeah. reason. Yeah. That and denim as well, right? Like yeah. they just became, because it's, they go hand in hand, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, I guess that it, industry is booming too. Yeah, it's interesting that, that new brands, uh, when they started, were small brands like Thursday and Grandstone. But these have now grown those two in particular, now grown to be at least medium-sized boot brands. And then you've yeah. got the second generation coming along, you know, that yeah. are starting smaller brands, the Kickstarters. And it's quite uh, good to see the, the industry uh, yes. growing that way. Well, I, Caswell is doing yeah. the same thing. He's starting with that kind of thing. Christian uh, uh, Daniel is starting out and all that. And now that yeah. you mentioned Thursday, Thursday um, became really big now. People yeah. don't realize, but now they have their own uh, factory in Lyon. They bought a factory. And let me tell you, to buy a factory in Lyon is not that easy. That may, to me, tells me that they're making millions and uh, right. they're doing very well. Right. People still perceive them as small brand and they, Oh, let's help them out. Because, and the the um, the business model is amazing because it's, there's no middleman. Yeah. But now that that's how they became big because yep. every dollar, uh, or what should I say, every profit dollar that they made was for themselves. That's Obviously, bad. they did it well because they invested yep. it, right? Yep. And uh, a lot of people would. You know, okay, uh, 80, 80 cents for me, 20 cents for the business. No, no, yep. they did it well. Now they have their own factory. I believe yep. they still uh, work with the factory that they used to uh, work with. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that tells me they're, they're big now. So they are not yep. small. Yeah. In, in my, for what I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right. Uh, uh, and as you say, if they're buying their own facility, obviously the, the profits are there. But, you know, all power to them because that's what we want 
all these oh, no, good I, brands do. Nothing. Right? Yeah. No, no. I, I, I actually, I, I commend them for doing all this yeah. because they're doing it the right way, and yeah. they became big because they did everything correctly. So, yeah. uh, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. praising yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, and I think we all hope that the brands like Parkhurst, uh, Unmarked, as you say. Uh, Caswell, we, we all hope that they will grow that way too and, and you know, really enrich exactly. the boot world. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, the demand is there. Uh, now, let, let me go back to Leon a little bit, since mm. this is the uh, topic. Mm. Um, Leon is uh, um, located in the center of the country. And so because of that location, everything goes through it and uh so it's a it's it's a city of two million plus people and to the two million plus people at some point in your life you'll have to have a link to the industry meaning when i was growing up i was uh all my classmates all my friends my neighbors had something related to it. Uh, I'm saying the parents, right? Whether right, it was right. a tannery, whether it was a uh, shoe factory, boot factory, uh, leather good factories, anything like that, right? And then when I went back, we were servicing that the industry as well. So you can never get away from that industry. Yeah. So which means it's, uh, it's a city of two million people that uh, and I haven't seen anything like that in the world. Like, you tell me a city, a whole city of two million people, that you have everything in that place. Right. And and I'm and not only tanneries and uh, shoe manufacturing. It's all of the materials, items that go around the uh, the all those elements, like right. thread. There's a thread f- uh, factories there. There is right. eyelets, all the hardware. Right. There is, there is, uh, you know, the uh, upsole manufacture. Everything. This everything, everything you can yeah. think of. Right. Last, people wow. go like Caswell. He mentions that he he goes to he gets his last from Leon, or wow. part of right. Like they they everything is there, right? So, right. Uh, mm-hmm. any you're you're in Leon and. Every corner, there is something happening with uh, footwear, right? Yeah. There, you breathe footwear in there, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't even notice it, but it, you you see it all all around. As a kid, I could go into these factories and I could see the people doing all the stuff. Yeah. So I knew yeah. how you know what the the tanneries smell like because it's something people don't even know. Yeah, the tanneries reek <laughs> they smell bad especially when it's like uh the blue skins they call it yeah 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 when it's just coming out of uh, they, they peel they peel the the hair and all that in that yeah. moment they stinks right oh. like henry <laughs> stink and then once you are in a different section once they put them in the uh uh drums and all that that's a, that's a nicer smell because now it's yeah. they're they're finishing the the skins, but um, people don't even know all those smells, right? And that's so good. that's that's how I grew up, just between uh, skins and shoes, and you know all my friends now do something. They some is a bag maker, like amazing leather bags and uh, others shoes and other one of my friends used to do just to crop had a place just to chrome the uh, buckles and this just to chrome right right that was a good business because yeah. you know the the people who uh, make the buckles and all that they they need they them need chrome and they just send it out right so it's oh, uh, this is- amazing stuff that you don't people don't even see Right there, yeah. there are three malls specifically for shoes. Like every store, <laughs> malls. 
<laughs> Every store is shoes, 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 shoes. And then there's a, one more. There's only leather goods. There's another right. more. Right, right. You know, like uh, wallets, uh, jackets, right. bags, whatever you want. There's another mall separate for right. that because there's a lot of things. You know, there is the, the, the even the soccer team. It was formed by the uh, by the uh, tanners and the shoe manufacturers in 1940. So oh, wow. and now it's still going. Uh, but the reason why we have a soccer uh, team is because of them. So it, everything is so wrapped up in shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And one, one, one of the things that link that I sent you is the sponsor for the team who is a boot maker, a uh, cowboy boot maker. Right. So you'll, okay. you'll see it in one of those links because okay. it's, you know, it's the, it's the, uh, the circle, a full circle, let's say. Right? Yeah. Cause yeah. Uh, it's a complete package. Exactly. Everything goes around shoes. Right. And so the, the, and that's why I was interested on in telling you that it is actually the, in my view, because, uh, uh, I I've seen it. Yep. Is the, is the footwear capital of the world for that reason? Cause there's everything is right there. And right, right. the, the, the guy who, uh, made this boots, even though he is in, in Querétaro, it's another city, two hours from Leon. He goes to Leon all the time. He tells me that right now he's he has an um, I'm not sure is an apprentice, but somebody from Germany helping him out making <laughs> shoes and all that. And when he took him to Leon, the guy was like floored. <laughs> <laughs> for all the stuff that, that he has seen because everything is there like everything is there yeah there's an there's one uh uh bespoke shoemaker in england his his name is daniel wigan anyway he calls my guy this guy in Querétaro. where do you get this can you send me some like he asked for materials because everything is really on Laces. Right, you, right. You know, he he tells me that he went to Leon to get the uh, the uh, dyes ah. made for him bespoke. Wow! There's a bespoke place to do your your uh, dyes. dyes. Like I wanted this color. Oh yeah, sure. They make it for you. <laughs> like that that that's why you know. Yes, I've seen Northampton, right? It's a city of 300,000 people or less. There's probably how many factories you you think? Uh, no more than five, six. Well, those are the populars. There, there are more, but they're, they're probably right. like 20, 25. But a lot of those, you know, in Spain, Mallorca, there's two factories there. Almanza, where other factories are, they have to import and bring things from other places. Boom, right? Yeah. In Leon, you don't have to. Uh, you have all the tanneries. And the pro the thing is, Mexico as a country is 130 million people, right? And because uh, this is something I was thinking myself, like, why is it that nobody knows about Leon? Because yeah. now, now it's been talked about a bit more. But yeah. no, before, nobody knew about Leon. Yeah. Uh, they just said, oh, it's Mexico. Okay. But yeah. nobody knew it was in Leon. The reason why is that 80% of the production made in Leon stays within the country because, you know, you have 130 million people to service. Yeah. So, uh, and and then the other 10% goes to the states because there's a lot of cowboy boots, um, aficionados in the so southern uh, states. Right. Right. And, but a lot of those people are Mexican descent. At right. least. So they right. know the, the brands and they know that they're really good and they're, they're well made and yeah. probably 
cheaper than the ones or the, if they buy it in the States, right? And the right. other 10% right. goes to South America and maybe Europe. But that's why people don't even knew about you know, Leon until recently people are going like Thursday, like uh, Devier is another brand yeah, that, yeah. You know, from there. Uh, oh. Christian Daniel, uh, there's another, uh, what's his name? Um, Jay Butler is more yes. uh, like shoe, like more yep. dressy uh, style. Yep. Uh, Ta Taylor Stitch is another yes, brand yes, that goes yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, Rhodes. Andrew, Rhodes. How, how do we do Rhodes from there? Correct. Rhodes. Yeah, same. Yeah. How yeah. can we uh, forget them? Yeah. Uh, but there's another one in, in Canada, uh, in Alberta, Canada. There's a lot of cowboys. It's right. like uh, because it's the Rockies and all that. This, and there's one brand called Alberta Boots, and they're and they're going to Leon to make the to make the the boots now, and they were impressed. I, I'll, I'll tell you how uh, the reach of Leon has gone. Uh, in in Australia, we we're a cattle, quite a big cattle industry in Australia. So in many ways, we have our own cowboys. We don't call them that, but they, they muster cattle and all that sort of thing. And so they do wear Western boots. And this is an Australian brand. It's, it's a Western Roper boot. Uh, it's called Ringer's Western. And guess where it's made? I think I saw your video on, on that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's because it's, well, I don't know about Australia, but uh, it, for people in the States, or brands in the States. Uh, the, the advantage of Leon is the uh, what they call the uh, nearshoring factor, right? They're so close to the States, nearshoring, right? Ah, right? So it's so right. so close to it that um, uh, shipping time yep. is a lot of, you know, a lot shorter yep. and cheaper for that reason. And everything is safer as well because it's all by land and not, you yeah. know, all the uh, ship, the shipment got stuck in whatever because, yeah. comes, you know, doesn't matter, doesn't matter from through land. There's yeah. no problem. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's why and, and the prices still kind of, you know, they still have they still have that uh, margin for profit. Right. And, uh, right. I think that's why Leon, people are just looking to Leon a bit more for that reason, right? Because uh, everything mm -hmm. is there. It's it's amazing. Yeah. It's just not. It's hard to describe it without um, uh, images and and you being there, basically, right? But yeah, I can yeah, tell you yeah. that um, yeah. it, it's just everything is there. Right. You, there's all. Just imagine. There are 600 and, a bit and some tanneries alone in Leon. 600 and some <laughs> yeah. in one yeah. city. So, yeah. uh, and, you know. And, and has, has all that facility uh, exploded in the last few years or has it always been there like that? Nobody knows. That. A lot of people don't even know Thursdays in Leon because they have so much uh, information already, right? So, <laughs> and that, they don't, really care if uh, those boots are going somewhere else, right? They just want to see what they can get. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, um, yeah, there, there, and there are like 1,250 factories, right. be, you know, right. between uh, kids' shoes, uh, women's shoes, yeah. uh, men's dress shoes, uh, you know, more casual, and then the boots, the cowboy boots, like there are so many of them. There's one client or some friends even, because we know them all, <laughs> uh, you know, they were my friends. And so the one guy was, or a couple of guys, friends of ours, their service was to factories, to bigger factories, just to do stitching, like a uh, uh. embroidery. Right. And so they were busy enough to just employ somebody to make the the, right. the embroidery to the vamps or whatever because they were for yeah. kids or whatever. Right. So mm. there's a lot of opportunities in Leon for yeah. 
for that reason, because uh-huh. it's always, you know, the, the, the shoe industry is very volatile, very, um, it keeps evolving. And so there's new needs every time. So, I, I mean, you've made me really interested in visiting <laughs> Leon. Uh, uh, tell me if I go today, what would you <clears throat> recommend that I, I go and see? And now you've sent me some images, so um, I'm happy to put them up. Uh, but tell me, give me an itinerary of what to visit. Well, uh, in fact, I I went in la- last uh, July, I went to visit because my family was there. And... Um, uh, I took my girlfriend with me, and that was the first time she had gone to Mexico, period. And so we want her, her to see stuff. So my friend, who is a collazo, and collazo, if you don't know the, that name, is the same family, just a cousin of Lefarge's collazo. Ah, okay. And uh, Lefarge, people think is uh, French, but it's not. <laughs> Le Farc is the initials of Luis Ernesto, Fabian, y Roberto Carlos. So Le ah, Farc, right. right? Collazo, last name. Right. And right. they were all my neighbors growing up. They were like three, four blocks away. And right. so they all had this, uh, you know, uh, tanneries, the parents and all that. But the three brothers, they kind of took over and started doing it more of a, you know, more millennial kind of uh, vision of right. uh, of business, not like the old ways that the parents used to yep. do, right? Yep. So they started the marketing uh, process, the whole thing, and doing or making good leather. Yep. And when you put it all together, as you know, because you're a consultant, uh, when everything fits, it becomes bigger even, right? So sure. uh, they, they did it that way. Now, my friend, who is a cousin, uh, took us to a tour to his own tannery. And then he took us to a huge factory that makes shoes for Timberland and all that stuff. But they were, right. unfortunately, they were all like... Uh, uh, cemented and uh, right, right. vulcanized and all that. So I was a little disappointed because I wanted to see the uh, Landis going, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think he he wanted to see, he wanted me or us to see the immensity of uh, factories that do that in Leon, right? It was amazing. It was amazing. It was just unbelievable. Like all the machinery and, uh, you know, it's laser stuff and yeah the, you know the lasting machines and the whole thing you know you still a lot of you still need a lot of skills but sure. everything is made you know machine made yeah. um and just boom 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 right like uh it's like, like production, production lines. yeah that's what it is yeah, yeah. i i rather see more of the uh more uh artisan Handmade stuff. Handmade stuff, yeah. right? But th- this is me, obviously. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. What about sightseeing? Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a there's a rich history in in the city itself. Yeah. The the Mexico's uh, divided by states, states, and the state that we are in has a lot of history because all of the uh, battles happen there. Uh, obviously, even from the uh, Europeans coming to colonize, uh, everything was happening right there because there was a lot there were a lot there was a lot of silver and goods that, you know gold that they could uh, retrieve yeah. and steal and you know <laughs> but anyway <laughs> um, so uh, Around Leon, there's a lot of little towns and cities now that are very colonial and amazing. 
Right. Uh, one of them is, well, the capital of the, the state is called Guanajuato. It's, right. Uh, I can uh, write it down for you later or type it up <laughs> for you because it's Guanajuato. That's the state. Yep. But the city of Guanajuato, right. uh, it's very European-like because uh, Spanish it's like influence. very Spanish influence, you know, cobblestones and like everything's made out of stone, like very uh, uh, medieval almost, right? Right. Right. Uh, right? But it's very Spanish and there right. has a lot of mountains. So it's uh, between the mountains to go from one place to the next, they yeah. did tunnels. So oh. the whole city is, uh, you know, you can go from one place to the next through tunnels. It's wow. amazing. Uh, and then there's another city which uh, a lot of Americans, Canadians go to retire there called San Miguel de Allende. Amazing town. Uh, it's becoming very expensive now, but uh, beautiful. And um, so anyway, that that alone is, uh, you know, you can spend days just right. visiting those places. Leon for the... Uh, it's more like a city, <laughs> so yeah. obviously, um, you know, there's a lot to see just because of the industry that you're interested yeah. in. Uh, yeah. But there is another city very close to Leon, which is Querétaro, where uh, the bootmaker I was telling you about lives. Yeah, yeah. and it's very, uh, it's very nice uh, as well. Um, yeah, it's only two hours away from there. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. I mean, I'd love to see the boots and where they're made. And as you say, you know, look at artisan workshops and handmade. But I'm also very interested when I travel to look at uh, the culture that's developed in each in each country. And so the, the rich history of Mexico is something that really I mean, you know, as a kid, I saw cowboy movies uh, about Mexico made in Spain. <laughs> so <laughs> I. It, it'd be really nice to go and have a look and, and look at some of the old architecture and so on. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that the cowboys were from Mexico because yeah. the boots were yeah. actually a combination between the Spaniard riding boots and of their course. own needs and all that. So yeah, uh, that became the, the cowboy boot. And then obviously, and, and the hats, cowboy hats, ah, right. cowboy boots. Yep, um, and a few other things, but anyway, they 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 started wearing it, and you know they. they <laughs> How <it>. interesting! <laughs> but anyway, that's why in Leon there's a huge culture of uh, boot make boot, uh, sorry cowboy boot making, making. Um, and and there is actually you know construction uh, methods. Yeah, you know there's your uh, your hand weld. You have your yeah. ear weld and all that. There is a Mexican style of, you know, uh, construction yeah. style. And that includes like the, the lemon pegs, lemon wood pegs and that sort of thing in cowboy boots. Is that where it comes no, from? No, what they do when they're lasting, they use wire to, uh, ah. with uh, the nails and all that, they use wire to uh, keep it in place. And ah. there's a few things that they do, but okay. that's called Mexican style. Uh, okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. And and they're they're keeping that sort of traditional style of construction. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Terrific. The it, there, oh, there's a nice lot of uh, um, because of the demand. There's a lot of not um, Goodyear weld uh, shoe coming from Leon. I have to say that, uh, right. and it's because of the demand, right? So right. Uh, right. And it's expedience as well uh they they um but there's a lot of pe a lot of uh, manufacturers they still do the goodyear weld and uh, uh blake stitch and uh opanka uh vulcanized uh, there's all uh, kinds of different uh methods that they use but mostly is um cemented um sadly just because of the, the demand right because sure uh, yeah so the cheaper and also aesthetics are very important and uh, they're different in Mexico. So sure. they, they go for uh, uh, fashion, yeah. even if it's, uh, you know, 
it's out of style three years from now or two years from yeah. now. They, yeah. they rather go in style <laughs> yeah. and then buy yeah. new ones. So yeah. the only way you can do that, cutting costs and all that is uh, cemented, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. now the biggest comp, the biggest uh, factory that I've heard coming from Leon, you know how many uh, shoes they make a day? A day. Seventy. How many? Thousand. Wow. <laughs> Seven zero. Thousand. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's a huge. lot. Yeah. You know when I, I see, uh, well, I know some. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess when you have uh, an industry that big. There's plenty of space for different types of construction, so you know, no judgment there. Yeah, I, yeah, it's true, it's true. But it's yeah. the demand, right? If uh, if if the people are demanding seventy thousand cemented shoes, that's what you're going to make. That's right? absolutely right. So uh, you know that that's how yeah. it is, and 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 most of it stays within Mexico. So that's why people don't even know that Leon exists, right? Yeah. Only until recently, and I'm talking about a month, a few months, people are talking a bit more about Leon as a place and not just Mexico, right? Right, yeah. Because, yeah, there are some uh, shoemakers out of Leon throughout the country, but uh, there are not many. And uh, most likely, if you see somebody coming from Mexico, it's, uh, it's going to be made in Leon. Most likely. You say the last few months, I mean, I've been very aware of Leon for two or three years because that's where uh, I've noticed a lot of boots being made. You, you and, have and I've also, Yeah, but I've also noticed, I think, uh, a changing perception. I think once upon a time, people would say, Oh, it's made in Mexico, as you say, not Leon. Oh, it's made in Mexico, not as good. But people are now saying it's made in Leon, Mexico, and it's really good because the quality is there. The price is a whole different thing because obviously there's the cost of living is lower in, in Mexico and so on, which dictates the price, labor rates. But I think people are recognizing, at least I think in the last two years, that Leon, Mexico is a quality hub of production, don't you think? Well, uh, yes, and again, history. Leon is a, a city. It was a villa first, then a town. But since it, its uh, inception, uh, uh, sixteen when it started, Leon as a, uh, was found founded founded in nine so, sorry fifteen seventy six, and then. In 1613 or something, they started to make shoes. Whatever the system, whatever the methods, they were making shoes already. So you're talking about 400 years of yeah. shoemaking. And so uh, obviously, those the 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 shoemakers or the shoe workers that work in Leon right now. The parents were doing the same thing, and the, their their parents as well, and their parents, yeah. and everybody, because yeah. that was the, that's the life, right? Yeah, so yeah. obviously, yeah. now with the help of machines, and if you're trained properly, you have skill, you know, you have skills on it, you're going to be making good product, and that's yeah. exactly what happens with uh, Grandstone, right? Like obviously yeah. coming out from China. The machines are making the work, yeah. but the skilled worker is telling yeah. that machine what to do correctly. Yeah. So yeah. that's why Grandstone is Grandstone right now because of the, the quality. It's the not work. because it's yeah. made of China, yeah. right? Yeah. Obviously, designs, material, all that kind of, you know, uh, helps. And put uh, when you put it all together, you you have grandstone, but it's not because of where it's made, right? Yeah. Same with yeah. Leon, I think. I mean. Uh, so so where do you see? Uh, I mean, other parts of Mexico are also making boots. Like, is San Mateo nearby? No, it's no, near okay. Mexico City. Me okay. Uh, because and, I, I've recently gotten got uh, introduced to Cordobes boots, which is made there, and it it, it and it's interesting that. The the skill of boot making is obviously throughout Mexico. 
how do you see that going? How do you see that expanding? Uh, that guy is in more south. Uh-huh. But I've seen people in the north as well doing that. Right. But uh, no, no. It's, I mean, people m- need shoes, right? <laughs> in Spain, you have uh, Almanza, you have Mallorca, and they, you have other places as well. La Mancha. They have, but they're scattered, right? Yeah. In in uh, Italy, you have uh, Florence, and then you have Napoli. You have uh, Rome and different places where they make shoes as well. Well, right. in Mexico, Leon is the hub, but obviously some people have, uh, you know, they yeah, study, they, they, they like doing it in their yeah. different places, as simple obviously. as that. Yeah. But I can yeah. almost guarantee you that they go to Leon for stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you can't escape it. They, you know, uh, my my brother uh, serves a guy who has a business, who is Italian, by the way, who has a business uh, that prov- um, uh, supplies safety gear and uh, stuff for factories. Uh, you know, those, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, extinguisher, extinguishers. All right, yes. Uh, vests or whatever the safety uh, yep. protocols are, yep. he, he is the one. So everybody yep. goes there. Like, you just find a uh, need and it's there in Leon. Why? Because um, the industry requires it, right? So everything is in one city. Right. It's right. as simple as that. Mm-hmm. It's so funny that... Uh, the, you know, the boxes for factories, I used to work with them as well. Like, <laughs> I used to design all the boxes and all that. Amazing uh, factories, huge. They, they just make boxes. That's it. For shoes, yeah. mainly. Although they do, uh, you know, for cookies or whatever. But uh, mainly shoe manufacturers. And, uh, yeah. And I used to design boxes for my clients. And I used to go there and check that everything went well. They have designers as well, you know, the constructions and yeah. we wanted specific things and all that. Uh, they have it there. And, and there's only, not only one factory doing that, there's like four big ones. Yeah, wow. So right, right. you have choices. So, yeah. yeah. So end, end to end stuff. Oh yeah, like mm-hmm. whatever you need, is there because the industry uh, dictates it, yeah. <laughs> right? Like whatever you think is in Leon about yeah. shoes, basically. So, so tell me, I ask, I ask this of, of everybody I talk to in in terms of making boots and that. How much did Leon suffer during COVID? Was there a big uh, a lot. shutdowns and so on? A lot, yes, and uh, the. Uh, here in Canada, the, the government kind of helped us out a little bit, um, but not there. So yeah. everyone went, was uh, on their own. And yeah. I, to be honest, I don't know how they uh, they managed to uh, go yeah. through it, but uh, yeah. they're still there. And when I went uh, last year, I didn't see anything different. Like, yeah. uh, you know, oh, good. Like that. So I, I think... Uh, yeah. Maybe they had, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know how they did it. Yeah. But th- one, one, of, one of my theories, and, and you hear this where the supply chain is international, uh, where, uh, take Parkhurst, they, they really suffered during uh, COVID because the supply chain coming in for like day night souls uh, was cut. And it was very hard to get supplies, very hard to get supply of leather and all that sort of stuff. And I have a theory that um, a place like Leon would recover very quickly because you have everything there. So when everybody's ready to start, they don't have to wait for that for that ship from Taiwan. They, it, it's all there. I, I think you're right. I'm not sure because I'm not I'm not there and I haven't spoken to people. But when I saw when I went there, I, I didn't see anything different. Yeah. So I think you you know your theory is uh, correct, yeah. and because mm-hmm. you know you don't have to wait that much, and yeah. 
they probably have, uh, you know, oh, give me some, whatever you have, you know, in storage. Yeah. Sent to me and you credit. I don't know how they did it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I didn't see anything weird. Uh, people like closing their doors or whatever. No, it's, it was yeah. normal to me. Yeah. But I, I think you're right. Everything's there. So the only thing that is not there is the machinery that comes right. from either Italy and all that, right? But everything that is new. Believe me, it's in Leon within a year or two. <laughs> the Leonians like the, uh, you know, the latest. So, because yeah. they want to boast or something. In between <laughs> it's a different yeah. culture, believe me. Um, and uh, so I'm sure what, you know, whenever the, uh, the, the Goodyear welting machine came in the early 1900s, I'm sure it was in Leon within... A few years <laughs> already yeah because yeah, that's how yeah. that's how it goes they you know they just want to make money too that's the whole that's the name of yeah. the game so, sure sure and the I real name that. is leon de los aldamas i believe is named after leon the leon part is uh named after the city in leon spain spain All right right um but then the Aldamas, I think it was a family, like very well-known family. And so they named it Leon de okay, los right. Aldamas, right? All right, I'm, I'm very interested in that sort of thing. Um, Rudy, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I really enjoyed that talk. Um, so uh, viewers, um, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, you know what to do. Please click on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, Subscribe for more boot reviews and more uh, really interesting interviews like this. Rudy, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Tech. Uh, it was great. And uh, I, I hope uh, people take this not as a boasting thing. It's just more of a, you know, something that they can learn a little bit uh, that they didn't know because they, they just say Mexico. And now they're saying Leon, but they don't see what they don't know what it is. So just a little more uh, in-depth uh, uh, knowledge, you know, just uh, general knowledge of things. Well, I, I think you've taught me a lot of things about Leon, and I'm sure a lot of those things people don't know. So that was uh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you.